Okay, so let's have a look at the animation panel. If you haven't already get it open, go to Window and Animation. And I've docked mine by dragging it next to the game window. So I'm going to start off by creating a cube. And I'm just going to reset everything, make sure it's at zero in the world. And I'm going to squash it down in the y-axis so it's kind of like a platform in a platform game. And what you should always do when you're animating something, if you want to repeat that animation anywhere else, say you make a, uh, a moving platform and you want to move it to another point in the world, is to put it inside an empty game object, um, just in order to make sure that uh, you can move this around without it jumping back to the same position uh, when you uh, call that animation on a moved object. So you don't want it to jump back to the same position or rotation or something in the world. Um, so if you make it a child object of an empty object, then what that's going to do is just make it local to um, that particular thing and then you can move that thing anywhere you want. So I'm going to call that holder and I'm going to call the cube itself platform. So when you make an animation, it's going to be an animation clip. So you click here, you go to create new clip and then you give it a name. It's going to place it into uh, the assets, so the project panel. Um, so I might just call this slide, for example. So you can see it's created that new asset just there. Then what you might want to do, you can see that I'm working on that particular animation because it's listed here. So it's going to list whatever you've got in the project. Um, and then you can pretty much um, animate anything you can find on a component. So anything that gets listed in here you can animate over time. So the cool thing about that is uh, that we can just add curves to a particular thing by just clicking here, go to add curves and it's going to create handles that we can uh, visually drag around and create the animation uh, as we see fit. So by doing that it's created curves for X, Y and Z. If you just want to see X just select the value inside the uh, panel there. So I might drag to, let's say, 60 frames. So you can see I've got 60 frames over here. And double click to create a new keyframe. Then as you drag that around, that's changing the value of X. So this um, axis here is actually the value, the amount that you're changing here. So if you want to change it by a higher amount, you really need to zoom out by dragging these handles. So you can zoom in and out by using the handles on the left there. Or you could just type in a value that's going to zoom it out for you. Um, so I might say, let's say four, for example. And then I can just zoom to see where that is by dragging the ends of the slider. So you can see it moves from there to there. And then I'm going to drag to, let's say 120 frames. So double the 60 and just double click and make sure that end one is back to zero. So it's basically going from one position to another and then back to where it was before. Okay, so obviously when you click on these things, the value of them is shown in there. So it's going from zero to four, back to zero again. And what we might want to do is have this loop in the game. So that isn't controlled in here. Instead, you need to select the object. So that's the asset that I've made, the animation. And wrap mode, I can set there to loop. Then I can go back to my platform and look at the animation component again, reselect X position and you can see that here it's going to animate out and bounce back. If you wanted it to be smooth you can add handles to these. So if you don't know what I'm talking about um, when I say a Bezier curve um, then have a Google of that and have a look at uh, how those work. But that's basically how these handles are constructed. And if I right click on that and select flat, then that's going to create a handle out there for me. And then on the end, I'll do the same thing. And you can see now there's a smooth curve going across. Okay, so that's created my animation. So if I press play now, you can see that smoothly moving through the animation and looping because of the wrap mode being on loop, which is fantastic. So I'm going to stop playing that and I'm going to click off the record button so I don't make any new changes to it. So that's my animation. What you also might want to do uh, is make that trigger a function in a script as well. And you can do that by adding an event rather than adding a keyframe. So going along the timeline you can pick any particular point and add in an event. 
So before we do that, I'm going to create a very quick script. So I'm going to create JavaScript, and I might call this uh, Sound Player. And then I'm going to double click to edit it, and I'm going to write a custom function. So instead of an update function, just a, a function that I name myself. Um, so I might call this, let's call this Blip Sounder. Bit of a strange one. So at the top, I'm going to write var blip, and that's going to be my audio clip. So that's going to allow me to assign a sound to it. And then I'm going to say um, audio source dot play clip at point. And I'm going to say uh, blip as the audio clip and transform dot position to take the position to play it at from the object this script's attached to. So I'll save that, switch back to Unity, and what I'm going to do is assign a default audio clip to it by going to Sounds and dragging on a sound file onto there. So that, whenever it uh, calls a sound, it's going to use that if it hasn't been assigned uh, otherwise. And then what I'm going to do is just drag and drop that sound player onto Platform and then what that's going to do when I go back to my animation is allow me to select it as an event. So I'll put the um, playhead at the start and then click on the add event button and then when you hover over it it says no function selected and if I click there a little drop down appears and any custom function it finds that's attached such as that one I can select and then I'm going to do the same in the middle add an event, select it, and choose that function. Now I'm not going to set one on the end because by the time it gets to the end it's going back to this event. Otherwise if I put one on the end it's going to play it pretty much twice when it gets back to its original position. So by doing that it's going to play the sound there and there. So let's have a listen to that. Okay, so what you'll notice is that it doesn't play back when you're just testing. What you'll have to do is press the actual play button of the game itself to hear the audio being called. So there you go, and that's the basics of animation and adding events in Unity.